Good morning. Welcome to our parking lot service. Is everybody excited to be up in here at 9.30 yeah, yeah, yeah. in the morning? It is a lot cooler, I will say that. Got a few quick announcements. If you notice in your bulletin, this week and next week we are highlighting the India missions. And there is an offering envelope in your bulletin. If you want to drop a blessing in there and put it in the box as you leave, we'll be most appreciative. We've got some wonderful pictures in there, but if you would like some more information, if you'll just call the office, we'll be glad to give you some more. Also, be in prayer for our Puerto Rican missions, as Stanley and Susie are putting that team and all the preparations together for that. And the other quick announcement is don't forget Wednesday night at 6.30. We're back here and for our parking lot service for our midweek service. If you've missed that, we've missed you. Please come back and see us Wednesday at 6.30. And we're going to get ready to get started. We're going to have our pastor come up with our prayer and hope you enjoy it. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? And that hour makes a big difference, doesn't it? In temperature. It is. Yeah. feels good out here this morning. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mm. Father, mm. we uh, thank you for the coolness this morning. Father, we thank you for waking us up. Father, we thank you for who you are. And Lord, we just come to you this morning, Lord, and we want to draw closer to you. Father, I pray that you be with each and every individual here this morning. Bless their families. Lord, for those who have sick ones in their family, Lord, I pray for them. Lord, I pray for those that Maybe have someone who passed this past week or follow someone who is not doing well. Lord, we lift them up to you. Amen. Pray for those families, the ones that are grieving. Father, we pray for our church and our community, Lord. Father, we're so grateful that you have spared us from the sicknesses that's been going on for the most part, Lord. And Father, how you've blessed us throughout our change in church, Lord, going from inside to outside. But, Father, you remain faithful to us, and we are so grateful. Father, today, as we take up offering for India this week and next week, Lord, I pray that you would bless it, multiply it, Lord. Be with Naveen and Evangelina as they help us as we support that that mission in india lord father i pray for puerto rico pray that you would continue to to bless it lord and that you would go ahead and start preparing the minds of the ones who are going on the trip lord that they would focus on you lord it's not a vacation we're going to do your work lord father we just uh Thank you again for this opportunity. Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our country, for the unrest that's going on, Lord. We just pray that you would intercede, Lord, that you would help to keep things calm, Father, that we would, as your word says, Lord, that we would turn from our wicked ways. Lord, and that we would draw closer to you than ever before. Father, be with our special music, be with our pastor, be with our service, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. We got a little change in uh, scripture reading this morning. I'm going to read Jeremiah, if you have your Bibles. Jeremiah 18. Verses 4 through 6. It says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. 
Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, Look, as the clay is the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, Amen. O house of Israel. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles to Mark chapter 3. 
And Madison, that was beautiful. And I told her, I couldn't have picked a better song for today's message. I've been preaching now for months and I will not stop to live the dream. Dream big and may God be the author of your dreams. Amen. To live and seek out to live that dream. May God bless you. I want nothing more than God's people to be blessed. And it's interesting the period of time that God put these messages on my heart. And even right now, this last week, and you see social unrest, and it's so disturbing to the very depth of my heart to see that hurting people. When I see the, the, the reports of the illness and the difficulties of COVID, one thing I do know, God is in control. Amen. One thing I do know, I have the ministry staff and the rest of the staff of the church and the leaders of the church behind me. And no matter what comes in the future, we will do what it takes to continue to flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. Can anybody say amen? God has got this. He's got us. And I say dream big. And then you ask my, I ask myself, and you can ask me, how can you tell someone to dream big when they're struggling, one of the biggest struggles of their life? Pastor, are you sensitive to their struggle when you preach living the dream? And I say, I absolutely am. For when you're struggling... That is the time to live by faith and not by sight. Faith is the substance yeah. of those things hoped for, the evidence of that not seen. Dream big by faith. And don't let a season of your life or a snapshot yeah. of time keep you from living by faith. Didn't had a little fun this week, and, and the average movie, it has over 600,000 snapshots. And a director cuts that down to about 200,000 frames, and that makes up a 90-minute movie. Can you imagine how many snapshots are in your life here and then hereafter without? Yeah, that's good. The ability to count. And what I say, in any season of your life, there may be snapshots of discouragement. Snapshots where things aren't going as you hoped. Snapshots where you get discouraged. And I say, that's the time to dream big and have faith. Your life is greater than a snapshot of time. What if we looked at our life as a movie? And it's a movie in process. And my movie just starts when I go to heaven, by the way, because that's called eternal life. That's good. And my life is so much bigger than a season of discouragement. And the reason I had Stanley read Jeremiah, we are in the potter's hands. And in the potter's hands, there, there was a time where, where the pot, the clay got marred. And God says, I will make it again. Yeah. And in our lives, there'll be times that we feel like our lives are marred and times of discouragement and times of pain and times of sin and times of struggle and times that we mess up. But I say that we are greater than that. And God has a plan. If we use the times of discouragement and even times of mistake and times of sin as learning lessons... God will use that for his glory to move us in the direction. Now in Mark chapter 3, here is Jesus. And he calls the 12 alongside. It's a deep message and you don't see it at first. But I pray God will open your heart. And he went up to the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And I say, is that fair that God didn't call the multitudes and only called the 12? And I say, it's, it's about the sovereignty of God. Amen. Amen. He is omniscient. 
He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He say, but would I call those 12? God not only knew their past, their present, God knew their future, and God knew their heart. And God had the absolute right to call who he desired. He called who he wanted for what he wanted. And they say, if he knew all, why did he call Judas? And notice he called Peter first. And we're going to look at Peter's life. Didn't he see that Peter was unqualified? I say, yes, Peter was unqualified, just like I am unqualified. But God takes us as we are and qualifies Amen. us. Amen. And he's Amen. a work in process. And I say, may your life be a movie of faith. And may God be your director. And to trust him when your dreams seem not to be coming true. That's the time to live by faith. And that's the time to dream big and say, God, may I see my life as a movie because I know that you are all powerful and you know all. And I trust you with my life, even when it doesn't make sense. And God had the right to choose these 12. And he said, then why would he choose Judas? Because God had to choose one to betray him whose heart was not right to fulfill all scriptures. Yeah. And God right. even used that for the glory of our eternal life. And he called him to himself. Thus I say, he calls us. And we can trust being in the Father's hands through every season of life. We can trust God to stay in the potter's hands and to live by faith, especially in times of discouragement. The next verse, the next part of the verse. And they came to him. You see, life starts when we come to Jesus. He calls us. He calls us, just come unto me. Come, all you who are weary, if you're in a time in your life right now where you're discouraged, come unto Jesus. Come. He's calling. And they came unto him. Eleven came sincerely with a heart open. When you come to God, come to him sincerely saying, God, my heart is open. You, you are the director of my life. My life is going to be a life of faith. May it be a movie. You're the director. And I know that's going to end well through the ups and downs. But don't ever forget, and you will see this in life, one came, and that is Judas, as a poser. There'll be posers in life. That's right. Don't give them time to distract you from God's plan for your Good. life. Good. God will take care of that. Amen. With time, each person's life will show for what it really is. Those who are living by faith, living to please God, living true to the call of Jesus Christ. It will be revealed in who they are. And the posers will reveal themselves. Our job is to live our life to the fullest. And he called the twelve. Each had a purpose. And God knew the end. The beginning of each their lives. So when he calls us now in verse 14. What is our duty? Or as I often will say. What is the proper response? God, what is the proper response when you call me? Then he appointed the twelve. And we should pray and say, God, what have you appointed me for? I want to dream big. But I want to dream unto what you have appointed. For what purpose is my life? And then it says that they might be with him. And there's the substance of a Christian life. God, the main purpose why I was created was to be with you. Oh God, I love you. Oh God, I want to spend time with you. You know, one of the favorite things that I do is riding on my tractor. Yeah. And yesterday, I, I got a chance to cut for about five hours. 
And I told a few this morning, it felt like I was in a fight yesterday because my body's not as young as it used to be. And it was funny, I was driving along and everything's going well. And then the first time I've cut my property there and I find a new place where I have to be more careful cutting. And if anybody's ever worked a bush hog, you would bust your, your bolts in the back. And it's better to bust that than to bust your gearbox. And all of a sudden, you got to get off and work on it a little bit. And then you go again. And then I was going good, and I was all happy and just all the time with God. And next thing you know, I found by the pond, there's a place by the pond that's wet. And I stuck that tractor down to the axle. I said, no problem. I'm a tractor master. I know how to talk to a tractor. I can talk to a flounder. I can talk to the tractor. I locked it in the back wheels, and it dug a deeper hole. I said, oh God, I'm doing something I love to do. Have you ever done something you love to do and circumstances start getting the best of you? Anybody say amen? But the story's not over yet. And the day wasn't over. I knew Jimmy had his big tractor, but I didn't want to call. I said, first I'll call on Shelly. She hooked up that truck. A little bit of power, a little bit of diesel power alongside it. That tractor pulled right out. Spent the rest of the three hours cutting. You see, if you looked yesterday at just myself stuck in the mud, you would think, what a terrible day. If you looked at just that snapshot, you would say, look at But if you look at the whole day, I got to spend about four hours on the tractor and a good portion of that talking to God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what God wants, to call us into himself. And, and when we come to God, there's gonna be ups and downs in our lives. But don't let a downtime, when things aren't going well, keep you from seeking his face that they might be with him don't ever forget if you're going to live the dream of faith it all starts with spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ getting away from the world and saying God I am just here to spend time with you I'm not here to, to plead the things I need and things I want I'm just here because I want to know you I want to see your face that they might be with them and that he would send them out to preach they had purpose in their lives they didn't see that yet they didn't understand the Pentecost they didn't understand the power that would come into them they didn't even understand the death of Christ and the resurrection but God knew it all. And God knew in the right time, in the right season, God would lift them up for his purpose that they would preach Hallelujah. and it would touch the whole world. Good. Imagine the call on your life at the right time, at the right season. If you have spent the amount of time with Jesus Christ, he's going to call you into something that will make a difference. And he sent them out to preach. But first he had to prepare them. He sent them out to preach. And he sent them out to heal. Right now, church, God has called us as Christians to heal. There is a social unrest in the world today like I have never seen. And God is calling his church to be a healing agent with love. Yeah, that's good. Last week when I went to the Black Lives Matter March. I didn't know what to expect. But let me tell you what I saw. I went there with about five cases of water. I gave out four of them. I saw hurting people. As I sat there and gave out water, one by one, at first people were reluctant to come up to me. But as the day got hotter, they came one by one. I have some water, please. And I give them a cold drink of water. And they would say, thank you. 
one of the calls of the church, I believe for today, is to be a healing agent Absolutely. in a hurting world. Absolutely. Why did you go there, Daryl? I said to show the love of Jesus Christ to everyone that came in my path. I prayed a lot about this week with the things that are happening in society. I said, Lord, direct me. How do I show love to such a hurting world where emotions are running so high? He said, Daryl, you got on a rabbit trail and this is one that's worthy of running down. And God put a verse on my heart to help. God put on my heart, be a healing agent and preach this verse. Do unto others as you would wish they would do unto you. I believe the only answer to the pains of what we see of social unrest is the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if the church won't take its stance with love for everybody, then I say, who else will? And I know I see a silence, but I pray it's a prayerful silence that each and every one of us would know God has sent us out to heal. And healing takes many forms. But one of the forms I pray the church will do at this time is to show the love of Jesus Christ by doing unto others. And others is to find by everybody in your path. Do unto others as you would wish they would do unto you. And I believe healing will come and God will be glorified. He sent them out to heal, rabbit trail over, and to cast out demons. And he gave them power to do so. And such is our lives. God has called every one of us with a purpose. And he will empower us to do that. And we say, God, what's your call for my life for such a time as this? And you say, Daryl, people might get mad at you. Preacher, you're not taking the popular route. There's those that will not like you blowing out, giving out water like that. And I say, I live to the audience of one, and that is God Almighty. Can anybody honk and say amen? Let us live for God and show love at this time. We can make a difference. Let's not be shy. Verses 16 through 19. He calls them out one by one, starting with Peter and ending with Judas. I want to talk about Peter's life. The life of a disciple that's more like mine than Peter. He is the unlikely candidate. If you took different snapshots of Peter's life, you would say he should have never been a disciple. But I'm telling you, he was of the greatest of disciples, starting with the Pentecost, leading the way, and taking the church from the Jewish only preaching as God gave him the vision to take it to everybody, which brought it to us. But let's look at Peter's life to realize God will take that one who's unqualified who has problems, who has sin, who has made mistakes, who is an offender. And in the hands of the potter, he, that it, when they are marred, he will make them again for his purpose. So I say to the one 
who is discouraged right now. When life doesn't seem to be going well, get in the hands of the potter and say, make it again. I trust you. First, I want to show you Peter the unqualified started with Peter the protester. Jesus was speaking and he said to Simon, launch into the deep and let out your nets for a catch. And Peter protested and says, Master, we have fished all night. You know, it's so easy for all of us when we see God's word and God's call. And we're going to do it, but we protest a little bit. And Peter, the protester. And that was followed by one of the greatest things that ever happened in Peter's life. And that was Peter, the admitting. He admitted, oh God, I am a sinful man. I have seen people in their walk. And the greatest thing that happened was them to realize their sin and confess it publicly. I've seen too many people in my lives that are too proud to confess their faults. I've seen too many preachers that hold their head too high like they have never sinned and made big mistakes. Amen. Amen. I say the biggest of leaders in God's church are often defined, but they were the biggest confessors of their sin, and they owned it. You see, a man or a woman of God that will own their problems and own their sin and confess is the one that God, as the director, has great things in store. And there was Peter the doubter getting out to walk on water, but then looking at his problems and looking at the waves and looking at the wind, started to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. But even in his doubts, Jesus was right there to teach him a life lesson. And there was Peter, the offensive. He took Jesus aside and rebuked him. But Jesus returned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense. You might be in a season of your life right now. You're going down a bad path. And you're an offense to Jesus Christ. Don't think that's the end. That's the beginning to realize there's a better direction to take. I want to talk about Peter, the sleepy. You ever get tired in the service of the Lord? There's a big difference between being tired in the service of the Lord and being tired of the service Hallelujah. of the Lord. Good word. Peter got a little sleepy. Good Jesus word. came to him and said, Peter, are you sleeping? Pray. He came back. Watch one hour. And he found him asleep again. And he said, Peter, pray. And he came back the third time and says, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Peter had his faults, but God was not done with him. And there was Peter the violent, who out of season cut off the man's ear. But Jesus was right there to heal and touch. There was Peter the cursing, swearing, denier. In the exact words of the Bible, cursing, swearing. Denier. Have you ever said Peter would understand? But God was not done with him. There was Peter the discouraged when he realized when the rooster crowed. He was so discouraged. I say that started the snapshot of his backsliding. Maybe you're backsliding right now and the good news is God is not done with you. Backsliding always leads to an unproductive life. Peter went back to the fishing. You know, for my fishing shirt today, that's funny. He went back to fishing and got and caught nothing. But a lot of times when our lives turn unproductive for God's glory, is right at the time God comes to us and restores us to his will. And God was right there to restore him. You see, Peter had many mistakes. But God was the God of his divine reset. And he says, Peter, do you love me? 
Peter, do, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And I say in your life, and life doesn't go as you wish. Live by faith and determine in your heart that you love God, period. You love him. You love him. Love him. I love you, God. I wonder what would happen in our lives if we just started praying more and more, saying, I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. When you make mistakes, when you're discouraged, just start praying, God, I want to talk to you and tell you how much I love you, God. When life isn't going as you hoped, just stop and start praying by saying, God, I just want you to know how much I love you. I love you when everything goes well. I love you when things are discouraging. I love you when the tractor is cutting. And I love you when the tractor is stuck in the mud. I love you, God, when things are soaring. I love you, God, when life seems to be marred. I love you, God. And because of my love for you, God, I do not spit. I do not quit. And I seek and I will live the dream by faith. The hope of that which is not seen. The evidence God, may we live by faith. Because then came Peter upon the Pentecost of a divine reset. Peter, the first Pentecostal preacher that went out and preached and thousands got saved. Peter, the bold preacher. Preaching so boldly, they say, I know this man has been with Jesus, Acts 4, Acts chapter 5. Peter, the powerful preacher and healing, that if they even came in his shadow, they were healed. I want to be that healing agent right now. That if people come even come into my shadow, the healing of love will go into their life. Imagine the difference you can make by love. I love you, Lord. Amen. May I be a healing agent to a hurting world. There was Peter, the rebuker in the church, that rebuked them and said, I will pray to God that perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. But I see you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by inequity. Huh. Peter the rebuker. And it was Peter the visionary who was given the vision to take the gospel of Jesus Christ out to the church. As I spent time this week, one of the things I've struggled with over the last two months of preaching. Dream big. Listen to me. This is how I've struggled in my quiet time and in my prayer time. Lord God, how do I preach and encourage the one to dream big when they feel like their dreams have been shattered. God, how do I uplift the one by telling them to dream big when everything in their life has fallen apart? God, could my preaching of your very best discourage the one and not lift them up? And the Lord put it on my heart this week. Your life is made up of much more than this season Amen. of discouragement. Don't let this season take you from faith. Your life is made of so much more. You see, listen, believer. The movement of your life really just begins at the death of the believer. That's right. And Sidney made me some beautiful tombstones that I forgot to put up because I spent more time this morning studying and got distracted. And in those tombstones, the story is this. Our lives are a movie that go beyond the grave. And one of the things the Christian has is the hope of eternal life. 
that the very best is in front of us. For the Christian, this life on earth is the most difficult thing you will ever experience. Your life in heaven, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. You will be with God and his companions, the holy angels that did not fall. And we will worship and we will see him forever, forever, forever. This life on earth sometimes is discouraging, but the best is yet to come. We have everything to look forward to. God is my movie director. And because of my faith in Jesus Christ, my movie will go on for eternity in heaven. Can anybody say amen? We have everything to dream of. An eternal life I have now. Listen, we do not get eternal life when we die. We get eternal life in us. Jesus says, I will give you my seed as a guarantor of your salvation. We receive eternal life that moment. We we give our all to Jesus and turn from self and turn to him and ask God to forgive us. We have eternal life now. Our movie will go on forever. But as I saw, I was putting together the movie that goes on forever. God said, you can't stop there. I said, oh Lord, talk to me. He says, everyone's movie will go on forever. I said, oh God, just as the believer, your life is a movie that will go on forever in eternal life. For that one who turns from Jesus Christ, that one who does not turn to Jesus Christ, their life goes on forever too. That's right. But God says there's only one place for them. And that's the place that was made for the devil right. and Amen. the fallen angels. And we call it hell. Right. A place of torment. A place we call eternal death. God. So the first step of dreaming big is receiving eternal life. Your life does not stop at death. It just begins. I'm asking you, where will you spend eternity? For the believer, this is as hard as it gets. At our death, it just gets better forever. But for the unbeliever, this is as good as it gets. And the Bible specifically speaks of hell and torment and fire and brimstone. In fact, the Bible speaks more of hell than it speaks of heaven. So how can I preach without a warning? As I close this message, and I encourage you to dream big and don't get discouraged. Don't stop dreaming. Live by faith and not by sight. It all starts with faith in Jesus Christ. If you've never given your life to Christ, may this morning be the time. I just don't want to preach a message of high encouragement without including a salvation call to those who are not in a right relationship with God. If you've never given your life to Christ, I'm going to ask Frankie to come up a little bit and lead you in prayer to do such. The greatest gift you could ever receive is eternal life. And then you can say, even the discouraging times on earth, this is as worse as it'll ever be. I've got so much to look forward to. I've got eternal life. 
I've got God's favor. And even if my life gets marred, I'm still in the potter's hands and he's not done with me. So I say to the one that's discouraged, by faith, dream big. God's not done with you. And I pray that everyone that hears my voice will live by faith. And you will have a life that God will bless with favor. That's my God. Thank you, Jesus.
get caught up with time, but he operates in eternity. That's a big picture this morning. That's not a snapshot. It's not an altar call. It's not a sermon. It's where are you going? From here. When you leave this parking lot, what kind of impact has this had on you? Someone asked me last week, Preacher Frankie, one of y'all opening up. I said, we never closed. Do what? I said, we never closed. I said, we fed the ones who are hungry. And if someone's hungry today, we want to offer them food, physical and spiritual. We've made numerous phone calls, hundreds of phone calls. We've continued to try to see people and be protected. We've never closed. Our India ministry is coming alive today and next week. Puerto Rico knows about McKenzieville Baptist Church with a brand new mission. We have done more in Honduras and Nicaragua since January than we've ever done in one year before. Without making a noise or a sound, and God has not closed this church. He has not closed this vision our pastor is preaching about. And we do need to fish like we just got here. The big ones are ahead of us. We don't need to complain. We don't need to blame. Africa's wide open. Even right now as I'm talking and giving this all to call in response to what I heard this morning. Nicaragua, Puerto Rico, all those nations, if I've left one out, you correct me because we're good at that. But I just say, Lord, if I've left someone out, Atlanta, Georgia, down the road, is that person hungry? Come and see us. You need part of what we took up this morning? Hold your hand out with doing an assessment. This church will never close because of her Messiah and her King. He's more alive in my life today than he's ever been. Working alongside of my pastor. If you could have seen that 24-inch flounder, my prayer was that morning, Lord, if I can't catch him, would you let Daryl? He answered my prayer. That old big boy hit the bottom of his boat, and you know what was on my mind? One day we're going to stand together at Mechanicsville, and we're going to see reconciliation of people who may not like us. We will see a community come back together. If it's an 80-20 principle where 80% of our community is attached to no church and 20% are attached to a church by the Holy Spirit power, if we dream big, we can change that. To that be the glory. Are you a disciple of his? I'm with Daryl. I'm Peter. I make mistakes. There are people who don't like me. They don't speak to me. It's okay. I believe many people didn't speak to Peter. Maybe because of the way he fished. I don't know. But I sure don't want to be the last one on the list whose name was Judas. If you've got any doubt in your mind today that you're an imposter, take care of it before you leave. Because it's not about Dow, it's not about Stanley, it's not about Frankie, it's not about this music, it's about him who loves you. And he died for you. Come to him. Give your life to him. Don't be afraid. Walk into his grace and receive his mercy. Let's pray together. We never close. Huh? We never closed. The secretary sits down and tells you the ones who didn't tithe don't tithe. The ones who do tithe tithe more and give more. Father, you've had a church here and I believe there will be people who hold this church together forever as long as they believe what we heard this morning. None of us deserve. None of us measure up. We're all in the boat with Peter. I pray today that you would rekindle a flame in my heart as I sat there listening. We thank you, Lord, for the message we heard. We thank you for couples who want to be recognized by their church, Dale and Shirley. I thank you for answering a prayer of mine last week for a friend named Mitch. I thank you, Lord, as a pastor, and I will pray for Darla. He's stronger. 
pray for people like Phyllis Hoover and others. We're not going to call all the names. Pastor and I have been praying, and we're going to rekindle the prayer life of this church. Some of us keep praying and calling. Bless this man. You have sent him for such a time as this. If we can't get behind him and pray for him and love him, oh, Lord, we rebuke ourselves. Thank you for the message we heard this morning. As we drive and walk out of and go out of this parking lot, may somebody's life be touched for Christ because we heard a message. We are his disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give